Hello and welcome back to the channel friends. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. So today in this video I am going to give you dictation for transcription number 31. The speed of the dictation will be 80 words per minute with a little bit of fluctuations as well. The lower speed will be around 75 and the upper speed will go up to 85 words per minute but the average speed will be 80. The dictation contains 840 words so the duration of the dictation will be 10 and a half minutes. Dictation begins in 10 seconds so be ready for it. Five, four, three, two, one. Start. Madam Deputy Chairman, the main question for consideration of this house is whether the increase in the passenger fares and in the freights that has been proposed by the railway minister should have the support of this house or not. I have been listening with some interest to the speeches so far made and they are all unanimous on one point namely that there should be no increase particularly so far as the second class passengers are concerned. What we have to decide at present is that those friends who have emphasized their opposition to this Levi have also said that in view of our developing economy, in view of our developing industrialization, in view of the fact that there is a greater demand for passenger traffic as well as goods traffic, we have to develop our railway system. We have to see that we increase our lines. We have also to see that we double our lines. We have also to see that the production of the locomotives, wagons and coaches is increased with greater rapidity. Otherwise, we will not be able to meet the demand of the developing economy. It is also agreed that according to the recommendations of the pay commission, we all feel that our workers, our laborers are entitled to DA which will be to the tune of rupees 12 crores. There are no two opinions about it. It is also demanded that so far as amenities to the workers are concerned regarding their privileges and concessions or the repairs to the stock are concerned, there is very urgent need that we should see that our workers do not strain themselves. An engine driver should not be asked to do work for more than 12 hours. Similarly, others in the railways should also have further concessions so far as leisure, rest and leave are concerned. It is also agreed and it has been emphatically stressed on all hands that the second class passengers are not getting amenities which they should get. The greater portion of the income comes from the second class passengers and the 
position is that they are not getting their dues by way of rest and comfort which are necessary for them. I appreciate that effort is being made that so far as sleeping accommodation and provision of fans to the second class passengers are concerned, something is being done. <clears throat> but this does not touch even the fringe of the problem and when we see the second class passengers huddled together like cattle, not even having sufficient air to breathe in, we feel that there is something seriously wrong with our railway administration. We have also to see that the shortage that we had about the supply of wagons to the coal mines and to our steel industry is not there. Madam, it is a strange chain of events that the minister who was in charge of steel and who gave statements in a way implying that the railways are not doing their part well is now saddled with that responsibility and I am sure he must feel double responsibility because he knows how the industry has suffered or was likely to suffer. As the Minister of Steel, he charged the Railway minister, Ministry of not doing things which should have been done. So now, these are the problems that we have to meet and the question arises how to meet them. I quite understand that there could be some economy affected in administration. I could also understand that by tightening the administration and seeing that there is not much of ticketless travel, we could improve the position. I could also understand that by taking effective measures regarding the new responsibility which Parliament has placed on the shoulders of the railway department, namely the liability of a common carrier for goods for which they have provided rupees 2 crores and by having all these things in mind, there could be some reduction in expenditure. But I do not think that reduction would be of a value sufficient to meet the increasing demands of the railways. That is the problem. It is true that it will be hard to increase any fare. It would be hard to increase any freight. We do realize and we do appreciate it and as representatives of the people, we do feel every day that our people are being taxed more and more. As regards freight, Madam, my own view is that so far as food articles are concerned, 
this proposal should be modified just as there has been a modification in the case of giving encouragement for exports and in certain other respects similarly i feel that so far as food articles are concerned the proposal should be modified and on the other things these freights may continue as proposed in this way the danger that has been pointed out by honorable members and to a certain extent correctly that if the prices of food articles go up that would create difficulty would be avoided so isi ke sath dictation yahan par khatam hoti hai ummeed karta hu aap log ne dictation acche se likha hoga milte hain agle transcription mein thank you